M0FXB, welcome back to my Mazzy dog walks. What a lovely day, perfect. This is like Spain. Uh, take it from me, if you're in the UK and you go to Spain, uh, this time of year it's lovely. Let's talk about enjoying the hobby. So the first thing I'll say is, do you, do you get up and then go into your shack or your corner where you've where you keep your radio equipment, turn it on, and then within a few minutes, you're bored. You're like, okay. You know, even when there's activity, even when you tune into 40 meters and listen to a bit of HF, and listen to a, a local repeater, and uh, you're a bit bored, yeah? So um, how are you gonna spice it up? How are you gonna get things interesting? Well, I'll just tell you how I spice mine up because I did that for 20 years and was and it wasn't always bored, but quite often. Um, how are you going to spice things up? Well, number one, I would say get yourself an all-star node. So don't be put off by that. Don't think, oh my God, what's a node? Yeah, it's basically a box with a radio in it that's connected to a Raspberry Pi that then connects you to repeaters and gateways. And I'm talking analog repeaters, not D-Star not DMRD star though many are or can be I'm talking about um, a real repeater so you could be receiving a repeater in Scotland which is 700 miles from me I think here in Western and it will sound no different than than being stood next to that repeater with your bow phone yeah and you will receive it on just one frequency with one tone and clear as a bell so there's one way straight away you're going to, um, you know, spice up your hobby. The other thing is think about your antenna. I think, is my antenna actually working? There's people out there, and I'm one of them, who have had antennas connected for years. Thinking, oh, the bands are dead. Sorry about my hair going everywhere. The bands are dead. Um, you know, and they've been thinking it for years. but. <laughs> It's because they've got a short, a bad connection on their PL259, maybe a break in the cable. I mean, come on, these antennas, they're up for years. And uh, you dog leg them and pull them and yank at the different patch leads. And you might even have a switcher box in line, a couple of patch leads, you know. This is, um, it's going to kill your signal. The other thing is, is you might have, you know, we've all been buying phones lately and more phones and more chargers than ever. Everything's gone USB-C, 5 volt. One of your chargers might be wiping out your HF signal. Well, if all your HF signals have been wiped out and you can only listen to 40 meters, but you can't really listen to 20, and um, you can't really listen to 20. Mazzy, what's this? You can't really listen to 20 or 80 another one you're gonna get bored quite quick aren't you um, so there's another thing check your connectors check everything same goes for VHF UHF another one I really recommend is have you ever thought about airband most of these radios that we've got will actually do airband do you do you realize that and um, so have a little tune in around the 130 megahertz AM most sets do that marine band have a little tune in there especially if you're by the sea have a little research about what frequencies you might be able to listen to. Even PMR. There's a lot of activity on PMR. You'd be surprised. Get out there and have a listen and tune in. Think about the activity in your area. Um, and, uh, and so on. So then eventually, I'll say lastly, you could then venture into the digital world, which I know many hams, hams have been hams for 30, 40 years, are not interested in digital mode. Completely uninterested. And that's because when they, if they do, and they get, say, a DMR radio especially, which you can buy for £50 now, and, you, which, and they work for analog as well. The second they start having to learn how to use it, they want to send it back to the manufacturer or they want to put it in the bin or on the shelf or chuck it in the cupboard. And I understand that because it's frustrating when you first start learning. And don't think I'm not, I don't also get frustrated. I do. But I push through that barrier when I've got that urge to send it back, chuck it in the bin, forget about it, not bother trying to learn, I push through that, you know? It's like when your car breaks, there's some things you can fix yourself, and the first thing you think, oh, I'll send it to the garage, they'll do it, and they charge you 700 pound. 
when you really look into what it would have cost for you to fix it yourself, it would have been 50. It's that kind of thing. You've got to push through the, oh, I'll send it to the garage, to the learning, and get yourself a cheap DMR, get yourself a hotspot, and again, exactly the same feeling, pushing through the barrier, learning about hotspot. That's what changed my hobby forever, was when I pushed through those couple of barriers, just those two things we've discussed, I then started to enjoy my hobby. Then I, the other, the last one is counting the pennies. Oh, I've got five radios, I don't need any more. But then you see a radio you can buy that you think you'd enjoy. For 20 quid, you don't buy it because you think, well, I don't need it. Well, that's ridiculous. If you go to McDonald's or you go to Kentucky and you have a nice 20 pound meal, you don't think, oh, oh my God, I've just spent 20 quid. But you sit there and you completely enjoy it, yeah? And then you forget about it. But with a radio, you get to keep the radio forever. That's the thing. And you can sell them if you want. But I always think if you're selling a radio for £20, what's the point? Keep it. Put it on the shelf. Because I'll tell you now, you grab it every now and again. You'll grab it. You'll spend 10 minutes on it. And you'll be like, do you know what? I really like this radio. And think to yourself, how many radios have you sold where you say to yourself, I regret selling that radio? Many. So anyway... Mazzy's having fun, weather, because I always say this to myself, enjoy those sunny days because you're always thinking, oh, July is summer, August is summer, but really, every sunny day you get from April onwards is summer. Grab those days, there's probably only about 30 in a year, because when you get to July and August, all right, there'll be some nice days, of course there will be, but there'll be loads that are rubbish and you'll think, mm, why didn't I make the most of it when it was sunny? two months ago so i would say make the most of this weather and if you really want to bring your radio out do it otherwise just enjoy being on the planet 73 hamtech bye for now please hit the like subscribe